Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Sales High Five Show. My name is Nick Kane. I'm a managing partner at Janik Performance Group. We're a leader in sales training, sales consulting, and talent management solutions. And today we're tackling the really exciting topic of implementing an effective sales training strategy. I'm going to spend some time on the show today sharing five actionable tips that you can implement immediately to improve how you implement your sales training approach. Today, we're going to talk about how we can effectively implement sales training to drive the maximum results from your training initiatives. And when we talk about sales training, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, so I want to start off before we get into the tips on how we define sales training and what that looks like. For us, sales training is defined as the skills, attitudes, and behaviors, and the development of those in order to achieve certain results that are based on the way sellers and managers perform their day-to-day -day tasks. What we're, what we're going to focus on today in our show is how we can take that sales training, that, that skill enablement that we're discussing, and how we can most effectively implement that within an organization to drive the maximum results from any sales training initiative that you execute. There's a lot to unpack here and a lot to consider. Again, before we get into the tips, I also want to mention one other key thing to consider. Sales is evolving. Sales is always changing. And as an organization, those that invest into their sellers, that invest into their sales organization, are always going to typically perform at a higher level than those that don't look at training and development on an ongoing basis, right? The way we sell today is very different than the way we sold a few years ago especially with the changes we all saw last year and even moving into this year. So always make sure that you're keeping your finger on the pulse in terms of the needs of the organization, how sales has changed, how your industry has changed, how your clients are changing, and offer the right level of development that your team so desperately needs. All right, so let, let's get into the first tip that we're gonna discuss today. The first tip I'm excited to share with you today is the importance of knowing exactly what your objectives are for the training that you're looking to accomplish. What do you want your sellers and managers to be doing more effectively as a result of the training? What are your key objectives that you're working on as an organization? Many organizations are working, are working on a variety of things currently in terms of improving performance within the organization. And it could be dozens of different things, things like improving cross-selling, uh, being more effective as a consultative seller, selling virtually, um, being better at, at, at asking the right questions and listening skills. It could be sales management capabilities. Whatever those key objectives are, I think it's really important that you have a clear understanding of that, that you're dialed in on that. And that's going to help you understand exactly what skills and behaviors you want to see improved as a result of the training. And that's going to help you really zero in on where that content comes from, where you can obtain it, and what is the best way to implement that training, knowing that these are the objectives that I want to meet as a result of this training intervention. Once you know exactly what your objectives are for the training, and you have a clear understanding of the skills that you want to develop in your team, the next thing you may want to consider is looking at various training vendors or outside resources that can help bring that training to life within the organization. You know, for some, some organizations have large training departments within the organization. They have the capabilities and resources. Some may not have those same capabilities and some may just choose to go outside because those outside vendors have the expertise, they have the content, they have the trainers, uh, they have the resources to be able to scale this as quickly as you may need it. So I think it is important to consider not only the content that should be delivered, but also who's going to deliver that content in the manner in which you need it, right? If there's a speed, that in which you're looking for this to be delivered. If you're looking for that expertise, if you're looking for that proven research-based training curriculum that uh, a lot of the vendors out on the marketplace offer, like Janik, uh, that could be a really strong option for you to bring this training into the organization and get that going as quickly as you need it. And scalability is one consideration, but there's also a consideration around expertise. There's also a consideration around the right type of content, the multitude of content should be considered in terms of what you're looking for. Blending those programs could be a desire. Um, so there's a variety of reasons that you may want to you may want to seek outside help to bring in uh, formal sales training to the organization. 
Another consideration in terms of bringing in an outside partner to support sales training within the company is it can be more cost efficient, right? You have to have internal resources if that content doesn't exist to be able to assemble the content, do the research, put that high performing content together, deliver that content. All of that comes with a cost and comes with time, right? If you go to an outside vendor that has the expertise, that has the existing content and has strong training capabilities, then you can launch that quickly. And overall, that cost could be considerably less once you factor in all of those other components. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. The other benefit of working with an outside vendor to bring in formal sales training is it really does mitigate risk. If you're working with one of the top sales training vendors in the market like Janik, um, the one thing that you know is that the curriculum that you're purchasing is proven. It's research-based. It's been field-tested, right? So you know that the curriculum that you're implementing is going to work within the organization and is going to drive lasting results, right? Versus working with an internal partner that has to develop it. We're not quite sure exactly where that content might come from. You know that what you're purchasing is, is proven, is going to drive the results that you're looking for. The third point that I want to mention today on the show is the importance of a strong and practical training implementation plan. You can have the best content in the world, uh, but it, I, I've seen content fall flat and not drive the results if you don't have a strong plan that considers activities before, during, and after training is delivered to ensure that you're driving maximum results. At Janik, we developed a proprietary model a few years ago called Atlas. Atlas is our training implementation model and considers those activities before, during, and after training. We want to ensure that the organization is ready for this change, that is ready for this training that you're implementing. So there are certain activities that we do on the front end, analyzing and planning the organization's readiness for change, understanding the nuances and gaining situational fluency before we deliver the training. That ensures that that training is relevant and is going to drive maximum results for the organization. Then you also want to consider the content itself and the level, level of customization that it, that it requires. And then lastly, you want to be sure that the training is well supported after it's delivered from a sustainment perspective. The first place I always look for sustainment is to the management team, right? Are your managers equipped with the skills, the tools, the aptitude, and do they have the time necessary to coach, reinforce, and sustain the skills that you're providing in that formal sales training? If they do, then I think the question is, what tools can you provide them to enable them to do those activities most effectively? If they don't, then you may want to consider providing the right level of training for your managers to make sure that they are prepared with the skills they need to lead and coach your sellers directly. If, if you don't have the bandwidth to do it, again, an outside partner that you might work with likely would have the resources to be able to offer either technology or services to be able to support and sustain those skills. But the main point is training can't be looked at as an event. It has to be looked at as an ongoing process. And the organization, if you want to drive change from this, really needs to be committed to it culturally. And the organization needs to be supporting it at all levels to ensure that the training gets implemented most effectively. The fourth point that I want to talk about on the show today is the importance of making sure that the training that you're delivering is highly interactive and very focused on activities. The one thing that we know about adult learners is they learn through application, they learn through doing, they learn by putting them into activities that allow them to practice the skills that you're training on. And we've all been through training that isn't activity-based, that is more focused on lecture. And the challenge there is without that opportunity to implement those skills in real scenarios and practice those skills with colleagues, you never really know how to bring those skills to life um, and then you leave the workshop feeling a, little, a bit lost and not having that opportunity to be able to work through those as part of the workshop. So it, it, from, from our perspective, we like to put participants into activities as quickly as possible within our, within our workshops. The learning happens through those activities. And then we have an opportunity to provide some lecture and some reinforcement of thought around that concept after they have a chance to execute and implement an activity. So we, we believe that it's really important to make sure that it's highly engaging and that it's, it's activity rich. And then I'll, I'll add another point to consider there is around customization. You know, you can deliver training that's off the shelf. You can purchase a product in that sense. And in many cases, that is good enough and it certainly serves its purpose. But if there's an opportunity to take that content, the role plays, 
the learning examples, any case practices. And if you can develop those in a customized way using your scenarios, your clients, your accounts, and, then, and your sellers have an opportunity to work through those scenarios in real time with a real world situation, that's only gonna help make the training more relevant and is gonna help them start conceptualizing how those skills apply in their environment. So if you have an opportunity to, to customize that curriculum and take that one step further from something that's more off the shelf, we would highly recommend it if there's an opportunity to do so. The fifth and final point I wanna talk about today in terms of effectively implementing sales training is around sustainment and measurement after the training. And I talked a little bit about this earlier in one of my tips, but it's important enough that I wanted to carve that out and make sure that we are really focused on what we do after a training is delivered to make sure that we're driving maximum results. From our situation at Janik, that is what drives the best results for our client. If there's a well thought through sustainment and reinforcement plan that is considered and executed after training is delivered, that drives a much higher return on investment for our clients than those that don't, right? So I think it's really important that you think about and consider what you're gonna do after the training is implemented. That could take shape in a variety of ways. You could leverage digital tools and reinforcement tools uh, to be able to sustain those skills. At Janik, we have a tool that we offer called Janik Expert uh, that offers scenario-based questions and there's collateral and other things, manager reporting that's built into that. You could use some sort of technology like that. Um, you can also focus on sales coaching afterward. Uh, we definitely recommend delivering sales coaching over time, either in group setting or individualized, uh, where you take the content and the curriculum. And our recommendation is to chunk that content down into smaller sections of the program, perhaps by module, or if there are specific skills within that module, break that down and run a series of meetings, coaching, coaching sessions. Listen to recorded sales calls if available. Right, try to break those skills down. But the key here is we know that there's a 90 day window of time following training that is most impactful in taking those skills learned in the class and making them permanent behaviors and institutional capabilities within your organization. So it's really important that you consider what you're doing in that 90 day window of time, keeping those skills in front of the learners as often and through repetition as much as you possibly can to make sure that those skills stick. The last thing we want is to deliver training and then never talk about it again. And we, again, we've all kind of been there at some point in our career. People get excited about training, you go through it, everybody comes out of the workshop just as excited, and then nobody ever talks about it again, right? That is not what's going to drive the best results. So it's really important that we keep the skills in front of the learners over time, that we're sustaining those through some sort of platform, through coaching, perhaps putting peers together, there's a variety of ways that training can be sustained, and it's really up to you to figure out the best plan and the most practical plan within your organization. And then I'll, I'll leave you with one other point. I think it's also important to make sure that you're measuring the results of the training itself, right? You typically would do that through some sort of post-training survey that's being delivered. And I would highly recommend you consider breaking up those surveys, perhaps delivering a survey right after the workshop that asks a series of questions, and then perhaps at about 90 days, following the training as well. Give, the, give your sellers an opportunity to implement and execute these skills for a period of time, and then come back out and reassess how they're doing so you can determine what might be standing in their way of maximum results, what additional support you can provide, and consider additional training that can help move that performance needle that you were looking to move as a result of the training. All right, so I'd like to do a quick recap of the five points that we talked about today on, on the most effective way to implement sales training. So the first point that we discussed is making sure that you know your objectives for the training. Again, critically important to know exactly what you want to accomplish, what your sellers and managers need, what is at the top of the list for your sales organization in terms of skill development, and be very clear on what those objectives are going into it. The next point that we discussed is you may want to consider working with an outside resource, an outside company that specializes in sales training as a way to get that training implemented faster, more efficiently, with less risk, and perhaps even with less cost, right? Working with an outside vendor that specializes in sales training has a lot of benefits and could help you greatly achieve the results you're looking for from the sales training initiative. The third point that we discussed today on the show was the importance of having a well thought through and practical training implementation plan. 
It's really important that you're considering activities that happen before, during, and after training to ensure that you are ready for the, the implementation of, of training, that those that are receiving the training are welcoming of that training, that you're considering the right type of training, and then also those activities that need to happen afterward to make sure that those skills stick and they become permanent behavior. So really think through not just the training itself, but also those activities that happen around the training engagement itself. The fourth point that we talked about today is to make sure that the training that you're delivering is highly interactive. So when you're looking at the training, make sure you're considering what activities are we using to reinforce the learning? How can we conduct role plays that are real world? How can we get the learners engaged into these activities as quickly as possible? Just think about how, uh, how, how interactive the training is. Try to focus less on lecture and put your sellers into activities that are going to bring these, these skills to life. Right? And then the last point that we talked about today, the fifth point, is, is the importance of having a well thought through sustainment plan and how you measure the results of the engagement itself. Right After the training is delivered is really where the rubber meets the road. Right? So it's important to think through how am I going to sustain and reinforce these skills? What can I do in that critical 90 day window of time following training to make sure those skills stick and they become permanent behaviors? So, so think about the activities that you want to engage in to make sure you're driving maximum results. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today on the Sales High Five Show. I hope you found value uh, in, the, in the topic that we discussed today. If you wanna see the Sales High Five Show in the future, just know that it airs every second Thursday of the month uh, with the most exciting uh, sales-related topics that we're gonna cover month over month. Um, I also encourage you to, to visit Janik.com for thought leadership, white papers, and other content that we're publishing on a consistent basis. We have a really exciting a new research study that's coming out that we, we put together with a partner on world-class virtual sales teams. So that should be coming out here soon. Look out for that. And again, thank you so much for spending some time with me on the show today.